promise to keep it very, very short. I know I'm eating into, oh, one second. Let me get this to my height. Okay. Okay. I know I stand between you and lunch, so it's my moral responsibility to make it interesting for you. I'll keep it crisp, 10 minutes only. And after those powerhouse of morning sessions, they were fantastic sessions. I really enjoyed them. So thank you very much if any of the speakers are there. And after that, this one's going to be a slightly light one and hopefully give you a little bit different perspective. So here goes. So here we are to talk about the green ocean of opportunity. Uh, Ramesh from the previous panel was uh, kind enough to ask how many marketing and creative people are there in the audience. And it was awesome to see a number of show of hands. And this one's for you, especially. The green ocean of opportunity for marketing, the way we see it. And uh, we believe is going to be part of white papers soon talking about it. We believe it is an inevitable part of brand marketing soon to come our way. Most of us would have, especially when, who, who have studied marketing or worked in it, have heard of the red ocean strategy and the blue ocean strategy. Quickly, the red ocean strategy competes for existing demand. So where players come together and compete. Blue ocean, of course, is all about creating new demand in new avenues. The green ocean strategy, as we see it, lies plumb in the middle of the, both of them. And in fact, possibly engulfing them. In today's scenario, we don't see any other way out, and I'll explain how. We also uh, sort of looked around to see who else agrees with us, and Harvard Business School has some interesting inputs to give here. The age is all about the conscious consumer, and I'm, I have a point, I'm getting to it soon. It's a creation of virgin market space by reconnecting with cons customers' core values. And what are the values that the customer has today? Point to pointer emphasizes on a focus of unmet consumer desires and where business may grow in a way that is both socially and environmentally responsible. The consumer is already ready and waiting for options with both intent and pocket. And from here arises the green marketing aspect that we want to talk about that comes from green ocean strategy. This is a time for green marketing. So how many categories globally do you think are really exploring the green side? I won't wait for a response, simply so that we are quick about it, right? But maybe not too many, right? You'll be surprised. We couldn't find a single category that has not gone green yet. Of course, there are norms and government uh, 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 things around it. However, we also laid a bet on our Instagram handle to find one and one. However, are enough brands marketing their green side? That is what we want to discuss here. So it's not just about, it's not just okay to be green. Are brands putting marketing budgets behind it and creativity behind it, briefing their agencies to create new ways of reaching new customers by using green marketing? We explored some of that as well. Globally, yes. It's definitely happening. Every iconic brand that you can think of and who has not greenwashed has, is running campaigns in some part of the world and they are iconic, they're great campaigns that really connect with the consumer in very fresh and different ways. And the wave is headed our way like a tsunami. Just like smartphones did, we didn't imagine what, uh, that it would reach literally everybody in India. Just like social media, and just like AI, the hot topic of today, this wave will come to us very, very soon. <clears throat> so green, green marketing is not only about just some communication put out there, but it is about consistent, authentic, and demonstrated commitment to sustainability by a brand. It's not sporadic, so it's not just about one creative put out. It's not in the corner of, some in, of the internet with one video put out with your sustainability report, no. And it's certainly not in the corner of your ad as well with one little icon which has a tree on it. It's far more and that's when the magic unfolds. This is exactly where Earthwise found its ikigai. 
we wanted to talk about green marketing campaigns around the world and bring them to India before the tsunami comes to India and we all have to catch up with it. We want to create a platform that is immersive, easy to reach, easy to consume. So you'll see a whole lot of very light content there, light in terms of the way you consume it, but hopefully par powerful enough in terms of the case studies we speak about. And we'll show you a few glimpses here itself. And this is what we are most passionate about and believe in. It is a platform to spotlight marketing campaigns which, are, which have a purpose. So what happens when brands find their green, green ocean in sustainability? What does it do for that brand? Of course, it does a whole lot of things for the environment. We know that. But when a brand uses that to market themselves, of course, backed with a strong green purpose, what happens to that brand? Let's have a look. <clears throat> so one is that it drives active markers instead of passive ones. So we are talking about advocacy more than awareness suddenly. We're talking about admiration more than recall. And we're talking about affinity more than just interest. This is what it drives. Enter Lacoste. I'm not sure how many of you saw this case study, but Lacoste in the first time in its history of the iconic brand, removed the crocodile and replaced it with endangered animals across the world. Of course, it raised a lot of money and a lot of power for the cause. But beyond that, what did it do for the brand? Let's take a look. 76% of the buyers of Lacoste t-shirts of this particular lot were new or first-time buyers for the brand. They saw a 25% jump on Instagram and a 10x jump on, on Facebook. And more importantly, they saw 600,000 shares demonstrating active advocacy for the brand. Sustainability markets create ripples, sure. Any, any communication does, right? But this one creates ripples beyond two-way conversations. So two-way conversations mostly we see are between the brand and the consumer. It's an old story. People use social media and digital for that. But mostly it's propped up by marketing budgets. What happens when you pull away that marketing budget? Often the, those conversations lag. This is a time for three-way conversations to get the brand, consumer, and what I would call the awam, right? Gen Z millennials who are not your consumers, category, stakeholders, all of them talking about that brand in new aspects. And that's what it does. Coldplay, I'm not sure, too sure how many fans, how many fans are there of Coldplay? Okay, some, all right, not bad. Coldplay surprised us with a sustainability report by a band, by a band that I would think I would follow, not my uh, Gen Z team would at all. And they have wowed them. They won new audiences in a younger generation. Isn't that what most brands want to do? They've, they've got new facets or in terms of social media conversations going. And what else? And they've got a whole lot of earned PR. The, sec the next thing that, um, that sustainability marketing does is create symbiotic growth within the category, which means brands working together towards a cause and actually growing the category. We've seen McDonald's and Burger King expanding the category since, a few, since the last few years by very active work across the world in the sustainability space and marketing it very well. A lot more moms are happy about the Happy Meals today than they were earlier. And they've managed to undo a lot of the negative reverb that this junk category has got in that. What else does it do? It wins you, of course, hearts but also a lot of respect. And I want to show you this one. It one is closer to our hearts and what we consume often, I'm, I'm hoping, as well. Maggie, creative. The Maggie Creative by Nestle is a very great example of how sustainability marketing was put out and brand marketing budgets were put behind it as well. They use the precious endorser days to consume, and to talk about a, crea a, a film which spoke all about recycling Maggie packets and urged the consumer to make the two minutes more meaningful, integrating the brand thought as well as the cause 
beautifully involving audiences to participate in it. This is, uh, this is a screenshot from our uh, Earthwise handle. So there are a lot of examples of authentic connections made by audience which creates trust, stature and preference for brands when they market themselves. We are simply talking about not green initiatives done by brands for the planet, but green in initiatives marketed by brands for their own good as well. Because still that doesn't happen, the good for the planet will also not happen. So let's see a few more examples. And these are all uh, cases on the Earthwise social handles made very palatable and easy to consume. We have the automobiles, Toyota, Nissan, Hyundai, and Subnikia. <clears throat> Some fantastic creatives there and can be watched on uh, the handle. Apparel brands making sustainability fashionable. Beyond Lacoste, we see Mango, Zara, and a whole lot of others doing some great work there. Skincare, Garnier, the body shop went lush. And movies are creating green superheroes and storylines, increasing their connect connectedness with audiences. You see two here. One is on Netflix, the other is hopefully getting us an Oscar. <clears throat> Celebrity brands earning goodwill and stature while doing good for the brands, actively promoting, not only internationally, but in our India as well. And we're looking at mainstream celebrities here. And IPs like IPL, demonstrating responsibility like never before, where several teams have actively worked and doing good and carrying it on their sleeves and their backs uh, in terms of their sustainability initiatives. So the green wave is definitely around the corner. Share with us any of your green marketing stories. And if you need inspiration, you know where to find it. I'm reachable right here. I'm not carrying any visiting cards. Stop doing that from years. Uh, so the next page is waiting for you. And thank you very much. Lunch is also waiting for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs>